I talk about different ways. Uh, you can slow down your network for testing and kind of getting uh, metrics that are more reflective of what your users are, are seeing. Um, so the reason why I think about this a lot is because I'm building a tool called Debug Bear that kind of monitors your website uh, and it's based on Lighthouse. So like once a day, I'm going to open Chrome, I'm going to load your site, um, but because I'm in the cloud on like a server, the, the site is going to load really, really quickly and it won't be representative of what you get um, for a real user. So that's why uh, you have to swap all the network. So yeah, so that's the first reason, um, just to kind of get a better, uh, more realistic experience than what you get in like a tech office or on a server. Uh, the other reason is that you want your metrics to be more consistent. So if the speed of your network connection uh, varies over time, um, some days you might see that your website is becoming much faster and you won't know if you actually made an improvement to your website or if actually all that happened is that um, you have a faster Wi-Fi connection today. So there's three different methods I'm going to talk about. Um, browser level throttling in Chrome DevTools, um, packet level throttling, I will slow down each uh, packet at the operating system level, um, and then simulated throttling, which is the default throttling method uh, for Lighthouse. Before I talk about throttling, I want to talk a bit about uh, network requests and how they work. So there's mostly four different steps to network requests. First, uh, you have to get the IP address from the domain by doing a DNS lookup. Then you have to um, establish a TCP connection, which is another round trip. You do another round trip for HTTPS. <coughs> and then finally, you do the round trip that actually does the HTTP request um, and gets the response back. Uh, and depending on how big the response is, it might also take some time uh, just to download uh, the response. So this is a very poor simulation of a high latency connection. Um, you can see there's all these round trips. Um, and yeah, so the, there's a packet going back to the server, there's a packet going back to the client, um, and also I'm simulating a 200 millisecond response time for the actual uh, HTML response here. Um, this is a very poor simulation because it kind of seems that, you know, you just have a wire straight from your phone to the web server, which is not realistic, um, but I just use this kind of model uh, for this talk. Oh, no. Right. Um, so first, um, I'm going to talk about Chrome DevTools and how throttling works there. Um, you might have seen there's this um, network tab which has this kind of drop down that allows you to uh, select different presets. Uh, the one I'm going to use is Fast 3G uh, because that's the one that Lighthouse is using by default. Uh, and the reason why uh, we kind of simulate a 3G connection is because mobile connections are much slower and have much higher latency than you would get on Wi-Fi. Um, so in addition to just like traveling to maybe the US or wherever your server is, the network also has to go to the ISP first and that takes a while. So this is an example. I'm loading the BBC website and I have network throttling enabled in DevTools. Uh, and you can see it loads much more slowly and this is great because now I can kind of debug all my placeholders and stuff like that and kind of see um, how uh, on a slow connection how my uh, network would, how my website would render. Yeah, uh, and this is how this is going to work. Um, this is actually quite laggy, um, but basically what you should have been able to see is that the packet kind of went back very quickly for the initial connection because they were not actually throttled. And then what happens is at this point, um, the response is being held back for 500 milliseconds. Um, so it's not like each round trip that has an additional delay. It's just that if uh, the final HTML response comes back uh, before this 560 millisecond timing, uh, then it's being held back uh, a little more until this kind of threshold is reached. Um, and I think earlier I mentioned it's 150 milliseconds of round trip time being simulated. Uh, the reason why DevTools actually uses this 560 millisecond threshold is because it knows that it doesn't actually slow down each threshold, so it kind of um, uses multiplier to get a more um, accurate uh, number here. Um, so I was using that initially when I was building Debug Bear. Uh, until one day I kind of started uh, showing this kind of TTFB chart and I noticed that uh, it doesn't really tell you anything. And the main reason for that is that um, it doesn't actually, um, it's because a lot of the um, variations in time to the first byte uh, are kind of overlap because of this minimum value. So you won't actually notice if your website, um, if your server takes 500 extra milliseconds to respond, 
because it would just be bumped up to the same very consistent 500 uh, something millisecond threshold. Um, so that kind of makes it, that's good because it kind of reduces your variability, but it also kind of reduces some of the realism. And there might be some changes that you won't notice uh, because of the way this uh, throttling method works. So the next option is packet level throttling, where you actually add a, the, um, the, uh, the extra uh, delay to each individual packet that's being sent around. Um, yeah. So you can see that the, the actual main uh, bit where you actually travel to the server is going to be uh, the same speed still. Uh, but every time the packet leaves your um, client with the packet level throttling enabled, it's being held back for 75 milliseconds, and that's kind of what's adding the delay. Um, so this should move a bit more smoothly, but it doesn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, you can see one of the good things here is that if my um, web server is taking more time to respond, that extra response time is added on top of the um, response time. And it kind of gets a more realistic estimate. And if my web server takes 500 milliseconds extra, I can actually see that in the chart. Um, if you look at the TTP speed chart, though, um, there's one big problem, which is that now you have all these kind of different things, uh, and everything is all over the place. So this is like very realistic, um, but it's much harder to interpret, and you have a lot more variability um, between each run. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of harder to figure out. So how do you actually do that? Um, well, it depends on the operating system you're using. Uh, on Linux, there's a tool called TC that allows you to kind of add that delay to each round trip uh, at the operating system level. And there is also a tool called Comcast, uh, which kind of wraps around, uh, so it's a platform uh, agnostic tool and kind of wraps around, uh, for example, TC and Linux or some other things, uh, depending on the platform that you're using. Um, so it's, it's nice in that packet level swapping is very accurate, but it's not super usable. So it applies to all applications because it's done at the operating system level. Uh, so if you're using Slack or if you're reading some documentation, that will also be slowed down uh, while you have this enabled. Um, also it requires admin access just because, again, it's doing this at the operating system level. Uh, and finally, um, the commands depend on the system. Uh, and while Comcast, for example, works fine on my MacBook, I haven't had any luck actually getting it to work uh, on a server. So last option I'm going to talk about is uh, simulated throttling, which is what Lighthouse uses by default. So if you run Lighthouse, um, there's lots of different ways to run it. Um, but in this case, uh, but, oh, <laughs> um, I'm using the audit tab in, in Chrome DevTools. Uh, you can see by default, it uses simulated flow for G. Uh, if you select applied flow, that is the DevTools uh, throttling that I talked about earlier. And now what's going to happen is that actually, it does not do any throttling at the time when you're analyzing the page. So instead, it just does um, an unthrottled connection. It collects all the data, and then it looks at the data and tries to simulate lots of throttling on top of it. So I have this waterfall chart of this like simple React application. Um, I have the initial document request. I have two uh, JavaScript files that I'm loading. Uh, and then once those two JavaScript files are loaded, um, I run some JavaScript that actually renders my application. So without any throttling, uh, the data that Lighthouse captures is that it's going to take 416 milliseconds um, for the first contentful paint. Um, so what Lighthouse does, it has this uh, simulation feature. So basically it simulates every TCP connection, it simulates every round trip, uh, and actually makes the, the uh, connection slower and simulates how if the connection had been slower, if the round trip time had been, had been bigger, uh, what would have happened? or like if the bandwidth had been uh, uh, slower or smaller, whatever, uh, as well. Um, and you can see it kind of has this main dependency graph there. Uh, that basically means, that basically describes like how um, this, uh, I don't know, yeah, how this works. So you can see the two um, uh, JavaScript uh, requests, they're dependent on the main document request. The JavaScript that's being executed relies on the two JavaScript files being loaded. Um, and then the paint event relies on the JavaScript kind of finishing execution. Um, so what, JavaScript, uh, what Lighthouse does, it kind of simulates how long uh, this would take on a slower connection. Um, if you can click maybe a few times, I think, Simon. Yeah. Um, so it kind of says, well, 
Um, the DNS lookup is going to take two round trips, and the round trips are going to be about 150 milliseconds each. So that that's the time it takes. Um, it's going to say, well, we do the same thing for AppJS. Uh, in the case of AppJS, we don't need the actual round trip uh, to do the DNS and everything because we can reuse the TCP connection that we already have. Uh, and then for CDN, JS, uh, CDN.com, uh, we do the round trips. Uh, and then finally, also, it's not just for networks that we simulate the swap link. Um, if my JavaScript takes maybe 50 milliseconds, we're just going to multiply that by four because that's kind of more realistic for um, a mobile device. Um, and now the actual uh, time to first first content will paint uh, is going to be 2.3 seconds. So we don't actually have to um, do the throttling, kind of watch the page load, and wait for all of that. We can just do it much more quickly. Um, and there are two. Oh yeah. There are two advantages there. One is that you have very low variability because we, you're really in control of uh, exactly what um, the round trip time is. And you don't have to worry too much about like what variability is kind of introduced by the actual physical reality that's kind of underlying your uh, page load. Um, and also, this is uh, much faster to run because you saw earlier, it only took us 500 milliseconds to load the page. Um, but then the throttle result was about 2.5 seconds. So in that case, it would have been uh, five times faster to actually load the page. Um, and that's part of what allows this to be kind of used for maybe PageSpeed Insights or Web.dev, because if you say have a five megabyte image and you want to load that in a 3D connection, it would normally take like a minute or whatever. Um, whereas with this, you can just kind of load it really quickly and then kind of figure out all the metrics after the fact. Um, so yeah, so this works kind of. It works generally well, um, but there are some edge cases where it doesn't work too well. So for example, I have this test page, and all it does is make like four JavaScript requests, uh, sorry, more, four Ajax requests that finish in about two milliseconds. It does another three uh, that finish after uh, 10 seconds, and then it has the first contentful paint. So the first contentful paint, it should be um, after maybe um, 11 seconds. Uh, but if we can actually run this uh, with Lighthouse, what you can see, it's actually much sooner. Um, and that's because of the way that uh, kind of the throttling is simulated. Um, you can see the speed index you can see is higher. Um, I'm not sure exactly why, but I assume that's because the speed index is simulated uh, in a different way. And for comparison, this is the result that I would get uh, if I use DevCool throttling. Um, so to kind of explain the result we just got, it's because um, to reduce variability, Lighthouse doesn't kind of simulate the server response time for each individual request. So we had four uh, responses after 200 milliseconds and three after 10 seconds. And that's kind of on the same origin, on the same connection. And Lighthouse is going to say, well, the server response time for that server is a median. So that's 200 milliseconds. Um, and that's kind of why we get the discrepancy between what really happened and the simulated result. Great, so to summarize, this is just an overview of the different options. Um, I think the main thing I want to point out is that um, Lighthouse makes certain assumptions, for example, around how many round trips they are. For example, it assumes that the DNS, uh, round, uh, DNS lookup takes about two round trips, when it might be more or fewer. Uh, and also it assumes that the SNL, SSL connection uh, only requires one round trip, when often you need to. Um, so you kind of sacrifice some of the accuracy to um, run it faster and get reduced variability. Um, I haven't talked about uh, the kind of bandwidth throttling uh, so far, uh, just because it's kind of boring, because it's all pretty much, it's pretty easy to implement, um, and it's pretty consistent across the different methods that I talked about. Um, if you want to know more about the different methods, um, Lighthouse has published this good doc that kind of compares a bunch of different options. Uh, and one that I didn't mention here is uh, the uh, TS proxy one. So that's like a proxy that is similar to kind of the packet level throttling, uh, but it just kind of um, delays um, the round trip at a proxy rather than doing on the machine that you're actually running Lighthouse on. Um, Lighthouse also has some information on like variability and accuracy and how that depends on the different uh, throttling methods. Uh, so here you can see accuracy the most uh, accurate is web page test throttles, which is packet level, uh, followed by DevTools throttles, uh, followed by Lantern, 
and Lantern is a name that uh, Lighthouse uses for the simulated plot length. Um, a while ago, I also wrote a blog post about this that you can find here that kind of summarizes all of this information. Um, and yeah, so you have the, if you don't go here, if you go here, that's bad because it has, it's like I control the, the slides and you can't change the slides. If you go to mz dot link, that, that's better. Uh, and there you can find the slides and look up any other information uh, you want. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.